for more great videos and learning tutorials, or to download the exercises that go with these videos, please visit our website at www.createthenet.com. That was www.createthenet.com. Welcome back to our video series on the fundamentals of HTML. In our last video, we saw a little bit about how to create ordered and unordered lists of information. In this video, we're going to see how to create a table of information inside of um, Dreamweaver CS5 using HTML. Now, tables serve two purposes on a web page. Sometimes tables are meant for what they were intended for, to actually hold tables of information. Other times, individuals use tables to lay out the format of a page, or to actually construct the layout of a page. To construct the layout of a page, you should always use div tags. And in a later HTML tutorial, we'll talk about how to use div tags, and then format them using CSS. For this video, we want to see how to create just a simple table of information. And let's say that each one of our three participants here took two tests. And we want a table to reflect the scores that they got on those two tests. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click here and then just hit enter a few times. That just gives myself a little, me a little bit more space to work in. Now we're actually going to work with four tags right now. We're going to work with the table tag. We're going to work with the TR tag which is short for table row. We're going to work with the TD tag, which is short for table data cell. And we're going to work with the TH tag, which is short for table header cell. First, we're going to go ahead and create the table by typing an opening table tag there. And again, you can see one of the advantages of Dreamweaver is that it will color code your different tags for you. Most structural tags or semantic tags are in this blue, but table tags are always in this teal color. So that can sort of help you out there a little bit. So I've created a table, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the rows inside of the table. Now I said I was going to have three rows in my table, one for John, one for Mary, and one for Peter. But I actually need a fourth row. The fourth row is going to contain the different column names. So I'm going to go ahead and just tab myself in again and type TR. And that opens a table row. Now I need to define the different cells that are going to be in that row. And cells can either be header cells or they can be data cells. For right now, we're going to forget about header cells. We're just going to pretend everything is a data cell. So I'm going to go ahead and type TD here, and then close my opening tag. And I'm going to go ahead and type name, and then close that TD. Now remember, when you're defining a table in HTML, you're going to go row by row, and as you go across the rows, you're going to define each column in the row. So this would be row number one, and this would be the first cell in row number one. I'll hit enter, and I'll go ahead and type TD, and then I'm going to type test one. So again, we're in row number one, and this is cell two in row one. And then I'll go ahead and do TD again, and I wanted a column for the second test. So that's all the columns that I'm going to have in this row. So now I'm going to close that row off. So I opened a row, put three cells inside of that row, and then when I was finished, I closed the row. Now I need to start row number two. So again, I'm going to do a TR. So I opened a new row. Let me scroll down here a little bit. And then the first cell, the first cell in the second row is actually going to have the name John inside of it. The second row inside of 
or the second cell inside of John's row is going to be his first score, which I'm going to say is 80. Oops. And then the second cell is going to be the score he got on test 2, which I'm going to say is 90. So now I can go ahead and close off the row. And notice I'm indenting everything in. It sort of keeps it nice and organized for me. And we'll do another row there. And then I'm going to go TD for table data cell. And then we have Mary's row. Her first test score is going to be that. And then we'll put in the third column, which is going to be her second test score. And then I'm going to go ahead and close the row. And we'll add our final individual, Peter. So I'm going to open my third row in my table. And if this seems like it's a lot of typing, it is. Dreamweaver and other professional web editing programs have things that will speed this up for you. But once you've actually uh, created it using that sort of what you see, what you get tool, you will know how to, need to know how to read this code in order to work with and edit this uh, structure. So I'm going to go ahead and do Peter there. And then we'll do his first test score, which we'll say is that. And then I'm going to scroll down a little bit more there. And then we will close that row. And then now that I have my three, four rows in here, the first row plus a row for John, Mary, and Peter, I can close my table. And don't forget to close your table just because you've put a lot in between those. So now I'm going to go ahead and close that table and get rid of that period. And when I click over here in my preview, there I go. There is my table. And notice there's no formatting at all on this table here. The columns are simply as wide as they need to be, and everything else is the same. We're going to format this using CSS. Always do your formatting doing, using CSS. The only thing you want to put in your HTML is your actual structure. Now, the one thing that I didn't do here is I didn't call out the headings. And to do that, all you need to do is change your TDs to THs. And that way the browser will know what's a heading and what's a data cell. This is also important for accessibility for individuals that have, uh, let's say, visual impairments that might use a screen reader. And by default, TD cells are just normal, but TH cells are in bold. And again, I'll click over here in my live preview, and you'll see my headers are now in bold. In our next video, we're going to look at some of the attributes for tables and in general. Also, if you're interested in seeing the high definition 1280 by 720 videos, please go to createthenet.com. When we upload these videos to video sharing services, they always shrink the video size down and decrease the quality so they come out a little bit fuzzy. If you go to the website, you can see the full resolution versions of these videos.